Hello, main characters. I just wanted to give an update on my $180,000 portfolio. So it's been a while since I've given an update on the portfolio size, and I'm just gonna be going over a couple companies that are in the news today or stocks that I think just reported some great earnings and might be some potential buys. So let's take a look at my milestone tracker. So since the day that I hit that first $1,000 milestone in March of 2018, we're coming on six years ago now. It's absolutely crazy how fast time flies. But anyway, $1,000 was first reached in March of 2018. We reached 100K in June of 2021. And just on February 9th, I reached 180K for the first time, guys. I encourage everyone who's on this investing journey, start tracking the dates that you hit different milestones. Because when you're tracking things day to day, you don't actually notice how fast and how quickly the portfolio grows. It's only when you start looking back over long periods of time, that's when you really see the effects of compounding and, and see how quickly the portfolio grows. What's even more impressive is that I actually went from 170K to 180K in just 22 days. That is the true power of compounding. And when, this is actually the fastest I've ever reached a 10K milestone. And I didn't even deposit $1 in the past 22 days. I've been saving up money to do a bathroom remodel. So that's actually where all my excess money has been going. So all these gains that you're seeing, guys, this is all from the portfolio just doing its thing. And one company that's really helped me get these gains is NVIDIA, which has absolutely exploded. It had a great 2023, and it's somehow having an even better 2020. It's up over 50% year to date, nearly a $2 trillion market cap. NVIDIA will announce earnings in a couple weeks, so everyone's going to be glued at the edge of their seats for this one. I think this is going to be a heavy buy the rumor, sell the news type of earnings report. So me personally, I'm up over $20,000 in capital gains, up over 513% on this position. I mean, I wish I wish I bought more shares back in the day when I first started buying this company around that 2019 mark. I knew the company would be great. I just never in my wildest dreams would have imagined it would be this great this soon. I'm concerned about how big of a position this company has gotten to be in my portfolio. It's the stock that's allowed me to beat the market last year, and it's definitely helping me able to do it again this year. But as it's around 15% of my portfolio now, if NVIDIA has a rough year, that means my overall returns are also going to be pretty rough. It's going to be directly tied to NVIDIA. And that's what worries me a little bit. But you might be asking, hey, why don't I just sell the shares, especially if I think NVIDIA is overvalued right now? Well, the thing is, I don't need the money right now. I think NVIDIA will continue to be a great business. It's going to keep going up for years to come. And I don't try to time the market and I don't try to get in and get out at just the right times, right? I, to be completely honest, I thought NVIDIA was overvalued when it was at $400 a share. And there, there would have been good justification for me to sell at that price. And if I had done that, I would have missed out on thousands of dollars of gains as it's now at $722. All right, guys, another company that's had less of a roller coaster ride has been Pepsi. Pepsi is at $170 right now. They just announced their earnings. Pepsi, of course, is the maker of several snack and beverage brands like Lay's, like Doritos, Pepsi, Cheetos, Gatorade, Quaker Oats, Mountain Dew. They just announced a dividend raise of 10% starting with their June payment. Now, I absolutely love getting pay raises for being a loyal shareholder, for doing absolutely no work. This is the 51st straight year of annual dividend raises. Pepsi's latest earnings were pretty solid. They actually beat Wall Street's expectations. That's a great sign, even if it missed its revenues estimates. Now, their CEO said this is because people are just strapped for cash these days. Who, who can relate? Who can relate? Less disposable money means less money to spend on junk food, especially with these inflated prices these days. That Ozempic, that probably isn't helping either. This didn't stop Pepsi from anticipating another 4% increase in revenues next year, and they raised their dividend. That's always a great sign for a company by the board of directors. That means they have the faith, the confidence, they believe in the business. All right, now if you want a company with a high starting yield, look no further than Aries Capital. Right now it has a starting yield of 9.57%. 
BDCs or business development companies like Aries, they make a ton of money for investing in small to mid-sized companies. They offer debt for interest payments. They have management fees that they charge for the guidance they provide smaller businesses. They get paid their own dividends from private companies. Man, it's just great to hold business development companies like Aries Capital. They just reported amazing results, a lot of money pouring into new investments and they're exiting less strategic investments. They have a diversified portfolio of companies that they're doing business with. They're doing considerably more transactions. Their, their earnings have actually more than doubled since last year. Aries also just announced a dividend of 48 cents a share. And as I inch closer and closer to 100 shares, these dividend checks, they're gonna keep getting fatter and fatter. All right, guys, you know I had to talk about this company since I love semiconductors, and this semiconductor company has probably been the hottest stock of the year. Arm was up over 60% after announcing their earnings, and then this is probably one of the most unreal things I've ever seen since I started investing. The company then went up another 30% today. The company now has a $152 billion market cap. Anyway, ARM, if you're not familiar with what they do, they design, they develop, they license CPU products. They're also now helping bring AI to billions and billions of ARM devices in the world. The company makes a ton of money in royalties when they license out their technology to other companies. ARM is essentially everywhere that technology matters. We're talking about cloud computing, to cars, to AI, and so many more areas. It's actually pretty crazy to think that ARM and NVIDIA were this close to merging into one company till regulators shut that down. Now, ARM, uh, it might be an understatement to say that they're slightly overvalued right now, but analysts, they currently have this company, it has a buy rating, but considerably less than today's prices as that price target. So right now, it personally isn't the best time for me to get into ARM, but one thing that I also wanted to mention about ARM is that they just IPO'd back in September. Why? Why is this important? Well, remember that failed NVIDIA deal that I mentioned earlier? SoftBank, a popular Japanese company, they still own roughly 90% of the outstanding stock in ARM. Now, they're gonna wanna profit off of ARM's success, right? This high share price, that means they can dilute shareholders, raise more money for the company by issuing out new shares. But another thing is that the lockup period, that's a period where insiders cannot sell shares until six months passes. Now, this is to prevent companies that just IPO and then insiders immediately sell their shares, and then that's gonna send the company shares plummeting. This is also done to protect retail investors who may not be privy to the same information as insiders as they might have right when a company IPOs. And this is just to align and make sure everybody's interests are on the same level and provide further price stability. So anyway, the important date is on March 12th, that lockup period will expire for ARM Holdings and SoftBank is free to unload shares. So I expect a big drop in share price if that doesn't happen sooner. And if that plummet happens, this may be where I enter into this big company. All right, one more company in honor of the Super Bowl just being played in Las Vegas this year. How about Vici Properties, a real estate investment trust REIT specializing in gaming, hospitality, entertainment, destinations that are primarily in Las Vegas, but definitely are found in other places. They're now trading at a 5.5% percent starting yield and REITs have definitely had a really tough start to this year. Fed, they likely aren't going to cut interest rates in March and honestly at this point a June interest rate cut is certainly not guaranteed and that's really going to hurt REITs. They often leverage and borrow money so that's going to be increased costs for them. So potentially with 18% upside from today's prices, this could be a great bargain play according to most analysts who follow this company. This is a chance to get in on an industry that consistently has made millionaires. Can say that you have ownership in part of the Caesars, the Venetian, the MGM Grand, and so many other properties on the Las Vegas Strip. One company that just paid a dividend is Facebook. Luckily, I just made a whole video about that, so check it out. I make fun of Mark Zuckerberg's so you know it's good. All right, guys, my videos are always found in podcast form under the Collect Cash podcast name. Remember, my weekly trades are available on the Patreon. Make sure you join the Discord. I actually talked about ARM months ago, so this could have been an opportunity to learn about ARM. So many other smart people that you can talk to in that Discord. Make sure you join in the link below, and I'll catch you on the next one.